Hi there. So uh, in the previous parts of the videos, uh, uh, we, 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 we worked out um, um, the zeroth order and the first order differential equation uh, that we get when we are looking for a multi-scale expansion of uh, the Duffing equation. And just as a quick reminder, uh, the Duffing equation is the second order nonlinear differential equation in terms of uh, sort of the non-dimensionalized uh, dependent variable y and uh, t is the independent variable which we take to mean as the time variable. Uh, and so this is the nonlinear term epsilon y cube and epsilon is a small parameter which we take to be a positive small parameter um, and uh, and this we are solving this equation subject to the initial conditions that y at t equals 0 is 1 and y dot which is the first derivative of y with respect to time at t equal to 0 is 0 uh, and the idea behind seeking a multi-scale uh, um, uh, expansion of this differential equation is to introduce a new time scale tau uh, which is epsilon times t and then look for an expansion uh, of y uh, in the form y naught t tau plus epsilon y1 t comma tau plus higher order terms um, and when we plug in this uh, expansion uh, and again we are treating uh, when we are writing this expansion we are thinking of t and tau as sort of independent variables however they have this dependency uh, which comes into picture when we calculate these derivatives in particular um, so when we uh, when we substitute this uh, expansion into the differential equation we find that uh, to zeroth order uh, the differential equation for y naught is the second order uh, uh, homogeneous linear differential equation. Um, uh, and notice that this is a, a, a partial derivative of y naught with respect to time t uh, because y naught is in general a function of both t and tau. So this is an equation in terms of the partial derivative of y naught with respect to time t. Um, and, and the order epsilon uh, to the power 1 equa differential equation is again a, a second order linear uh, uh, differential equation for the variable y1 subject to the forcing uh, which is which comes from uh, the from the y naught solution so the forcing is of the form minus y naught cube minus two times uh, d2 y naught dt d tau a mixed mixed partial derivatives okay um, now um, so the solution um, uh, we quickly also wrote down the solution for this uh, zeroth order uh, uh, differential equation and um, so, so if, if you recall, if you have a differential equation, let's say, which contains the full derivative of y with respect to time t um, plus y equals 0, then the solution to this differential equation uh, or an answer that we can make which satisfies this differential equation is of the form a cosine t plus b sine t, where a and b are some constants which comes about from the initial conditions. However, now uh, uh, we, we, we are looking for a differential equation which has a partial derivative of y0 with respect to time t plus y0 equals 0. And, and therefore, this, the ansatz that we can try is a generalization of this ansatz uh, and we can write the solution. Uh, since, since y0 is a function of both t and tau, we can write down the solution as a, in the form a tau cosine t plus b tau sine t. Uh, and now here a and b are some real functions of the variable tau um, and, and the reason this answer works is because uh, if, we if, we, if we substitute this y0 into the differential equation we find that uh, the second derivative of uh, this answer with respect to the variable t plus y0 itself uh, sums to zero. Uh, so, so this is a, 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 a consistent answer to make. Uh, however, uh, instead of two constants a and b, we now have two functions uh, a and b of, of the variable tau uh, which we still need to figure out. Um, now, one of the ways, uh, another way to sort of express this this solution is is to write uh, um, is to write y naught in the form or the solution y naught in the form of complex exponentials, and then it looks like a tau e to the power i p plus the conjugate of a tau e to the power minus i t. Uh, and essentially, uh, the process of going from the cosine sine uh, ansatz to this uh, particular uh, form is to simply use the Euler's expression and, and write cosine t in terms of uh, uh, e to the power of i t plus e to the power minus i t divided by 2. Uh, similarly, write sine of t as e to the power i t minus e to the power minus i t divided by 2i and then substitute it uh, into, the, into the expression. And then we find that we, we, we have to come up with two complex, uh, a complex function a tau. Uh, and, and the other uh, other term that the other function that appears is based essentially the conjugate of the complex function a tau. Uh, and since a complex function uh, has both a phase and a magnitude, um, we we still working with uh, we still have two undetermined coefficients. So for instance, we can write a tau uh, in the form r tau 
e to the power pi theta tau and then r and theta are undetermined functions uh, which is similar to solving for let's say the small a and small b as functions of tau uh, if, if we express the solution in terms of cosine and sines. Okay, so uh, so now the idea is uh, if you make these ansatz and, and 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 say that okay this is the this is the solution to the zero order differential equation, uh, we now substitute this ansatz into uh, the differential equation for y one where uh, where the, where y not uh, or rather uh, this constitutes the forcing term to the differential equation, and so we basically need to calculate what is y not q and what is two d y not d t d tau. Um, so, so uh, as a first step, let's calculate uh, the partial derivative of y naught with respect to time t. Um, so, d y naught dt is essentially um, i times we differentiate this factor i times a tau e to the power of i t, uh, and then minus i times a star tau e to the power of minus i t, and then we differentiate this expression with respect to uh, tau. Uh, so, we have the a mixed derivative term this way and then uh, so essentially a and a star are the only functions of tau and so this looks like d a d tau e to the power i t minus i times d a star d tau e to the power minus i t. So that's one of the terms that we that we have to evaluate which is this particular term. Um, and the and the other term we need is a y naught cube. Um, so we need to Take the cube of this expression, uh, or maybe um, uh, maybe we can just write this down separately. Uh, get rid of this. So, uh, so so let's just write out the whole differential equation. We have one of the terms. So the whole differential equation would be d to y one d t two plus y one equals minus two times this expression. So it's minus two i uh, d a d tau e to the power t minus 2 um, i um, d a star um, d tau e to the power minus i t. Um, actually, when we differentiate this, uh, we'll have a minus i, and therefore, uh, this should, there should be a plus here. So, there will be a plus here. Um, right. Okay. So, so, now we need to evaluate the y naught q term. And essentially, that involves cubing uh, the, the exponential. Uh, so let me just write down that again. Um, so y naught here is a e to the power i t plus a star e to the power minus i t. Um, so in order to get here, we differentiated this with respect to time t once. So we have an i, and we differentiate this. We have a minus i, uh, and therefore, uh, when we put in a minus here, uh, the the signs flip, and we get this resultant expression. And now we need to take the cube of this. So the cube of this will be. Uh, and we'll have a minus y naught cube, so we need to put in a minus here. So we'll have a minus a cube a to the power of 390 minus a star cube e to the power of minus 390. And then we'll have minus um, 3 a, uh, a star times a e to the power of t plus a star e to the power of minus Um, so, so this is the differential equation uh, for uh, for for the y one term, uh, and this and the right hand side is essentially the forcing to to this differential equation. Um, now, as as uh, um, now, now now the function a a as a function of tau is still undetermined, and and and, and the basic uh, idea now is to ensure that. Uh, uh, the forcing that's being applied to this differential equation uh, does not have any uh, frequency that matches its natural frequency. Or in other words, uh, we know that resonant terms or rather secular terms arise when we are forcing the system at a frequency that matches the natural frequency of the system. Now the natural frequency of this is omega equals 1 uh, because if you saw the homogeneous differential equation d2y d2 plus y1 equals 0. Uh, its solution uh, would be of the form, uh, essentially of this form, right? And and, and the frequency at which uh, this oscillates is uh, is omega equals one because uh, we can write this in general as e to the power i omega t plus a star e to the power of minus i omega t, and in this case omega is one. So if you look at the right hand side, if there is any free, any any term that's forcing the system 
at a frequency omega equals 1 and I'll put a link to the video where we work this out um, then there will be secular terms uh, which will which will essentially uh, cause resonance in the system and then, and then the system energy will grow unboundedly. Um, so, so, so the way to determine A as a function of tau is to ensure that the right hand side does not contain any forcing at a frequency omega equals 1. And so let's collect all the terms on the right hand side which are actually forcing the system at a frequency omega equals 1. So we need to look for p factors of e to the power of i t and e to the power of minus i t. Essentially uh, these terms and then we have this term and then we have this term. So let's, let's write down the p factors of e to the power of i t first. So e to the power of i t has p factor as minus 2 i d a d tau which is coming from here and then we have one term here um, which will give us a minus 3 a square a star. Uh, and in the same way, uh, the, uh, the three factors for e to the minus i t are 2 d a star d tau, uh, which is coming from here. And then we have a minus uh, 3 a a star square, uh, essentially this. All right. Um, now, if you, uh, so there is an i here. Now, now if you look at uh, these two terms, uh, Notice that if we take the conjugate of this, we will have a plus i d a star d tau. So the conjugate of this term will be this term because the conjugate of i minus i will be of i, the conjugate of a will be a star. So this term is the conjugate of this term. And if we take the conjugate of this, we will have uh, a square star a, which is essentially this term. Uh, so the prefactor of e to the power of i t is actually the conjugate of the prefactor of e to the minus i t. And, and, this, and all this is coming on the right hand side of this differential equation d2 y1 dt2 plus y1 equals 0. So if we can ensure that this is 0, rather the, the, the term in the square brackets, if this is 0, uh, we would have simultaneously ensured that this is 0, right? Um, and, and, if, and, and if this is indeed 0, then the forcing that's appearing on the right hand side will only contain uh, frequency components which are oscillating at omega equals 3 because we have a 3 it, we have a 3 it here, and all the other terms will be 0. So the key to finding the, the, the yet, as yet undetermined function a, uh, as a, which is a function of tau, is to actually ensure that this term is 0. Or in other words, let's like, write this down separately. Um, what we want is um, minus 2i dA d tau plus minus 3 a square a star is 0. If this is 0, so, so is its conjugate 0. And if we can solve this equation, and notice that this is an ordinary differential equation for the function a, where a is a complex function. So if we can solve this differential equation, uh, we would have ensured that the right hand side does not contain any forcing at omega equals 1. And in this way, we would have ensured that y1 always remains bounded because the only frequency at which we are forcing the system is actually omega equals 3, which is not its resonant frequency. Uh, so, so we would ensure that y1 is bounded, which was one of the problems we were facing in a second order expansion when we were doing a regular perturbation expansion. And having ensured that, uh, we will figure out what A is. And, and once we know A, we know the solution for y0. Uh, once we also plug in the initial conditions, uh, so, so let's work out these steps in the next part of the video and um, yeah, hope to see you there then. Thanks.